Good morning, it is James Craptastic Yarns, and today's Bible reading comes from 2 Kings 18, 2 Chronicles 29 through 31, and Psalm 48. All right, let's open up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you giving you praise, honor, and glory, and thankfulness for our situations. Lord, too many times we are not thankful and we do not show you enough of that. So Lord, we are thankful for the beauty in the sunrise. We are thankful for the beauty that surrounds us. We are thankful for those you put in our presence, even though, Lord, sometimes we may not appreciate them at the moment, Lord. So Lord, we are thankful for the things that you show us each and every day. We are thankful for your word, Lord, for the glory that you have given us through the salvation and the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we do ask for healing for those who are in need of healing, for comfort and peace for those who are seeking it. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And I am reading the... Uh, English Standard Version, and I am going to, uh, and I'm using the Blue Letter Bible series. And I thought I would tell you what the series that I would be reading next would be after we're done with this Bible reading, because yes, I'm going to continue it. Um, I am going to be reading the New American Standard Bible, which also includes the uh, Apocrypha. So we are going to be reading that as well the next year. Uh, but we have quite a ways to go, so let's get into the reading. Hezekiah reigns in Judah. In the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, the king of Israel, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, son, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abby, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and, Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah, and he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the people of Israel had made offerings to it. It was called Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him, nor among those who were before him. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept the commandments that the Lord commanded him. And the Lord was with him. Wherever he went out, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. He struck down the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from watchtower to fortified city. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, son of Elah, the king of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years he took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria carried the Israelites away to Assyria and put them in Hala. And on the harbor, the river of Gozan, in the cities of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, even all that of Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. They neither listened nor obeyed. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah king of Judah sent to the king of Syria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong, I have done wrong, withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me I will bear. And the king of Syria required of Hezekiah king of Judah three hundred talents of silver 
and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the several silver that he found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the doorpost that Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave them to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent to Tartan, the Rebar, the Reb, Rab Saras and the Rab Sheka with a great army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. When they arrived, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is on the highway to the washer's field. And when they called for the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household in Shebnab, the secretary and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And the rap Shekah said to them, Say to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you rest this trust of yours? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? In whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you are trusting now in Egypt that broken reed of a staff, which will pierce the hand of any man who leans on it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, We trust in the Lord our God, is not he whose high places and altar, altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, You shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you two thousand horses if you are able, on your part, to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants, when you must, when you trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, it is without the Lord that I have come up against this place to destroy it. The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shabnab, and Joah, said to the Rab Shekah, Please speak with your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rab Shekah said to them, has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you, and not to the men sitting on the wall who are doomed with you, to eat their own dung and to drink their own urine? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Do not let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord by saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me and come out to me. Then each of you will eat of his own vine, and each one of his own fig tree, and each one of you will drink the water of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. And do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you by saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? What, where are the gods of Sepharvim, Hina, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their lands out of my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But the people were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, 
who was over the household in Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Rab Shekah. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Hezekiah reigns in Judah. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and assembled them in the square on the east and said to them, Hear me, Levites, now consecrate yourselves and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and carry out the filth from this holy place. For our fathers have been unfaithful and have done what was evil in the sight of the Lord, our God. They have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. They also shut the doors of the vestibule and put out the lamps and have not burned incense or offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Therefore the wrath of the Lord came on Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of horror, of astonishment and of hissing as you see with your own eyes. Behold, for behold, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, in order that his fierce anger may turn away from us. My sons, do not now be negligent, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him and to be his ministers and make offerings to him. Then the Levites arose, Mahath the son of Amasai, and Joel the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of Merari, Kish the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehalalel, land of the Gershonites, Johah the son of Zema, and Eden the son of Joah, and the sons of El Elizaphan, and Shimri, and Jaul, and of the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Madaniah, and of the sons of Heman, Jaul, and Shemai, and of the sons of Jetuthan, Shemaiah, and Uzil. They gathered their brothers and consecrated themselves and went in as the king had commanded by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. The priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and they brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it and carried it out to the brook Kidron. They began to consecrate on the first day of the first month, and on the eighth day of the month they came to the vestibule of the Lord. Then for eight days they consecrated the house of the Lord, and on the sixteenth day of the first month they finished. Then he went to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, and the table for the showbread and all its utensils. All the utensils the king has discarded in his reign when he was faithless. We have made ready and consecrated, and behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. Then Hezekiah the king rose early and gathered the officials of the city and went up to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, seven male goats for a sin offering for the kingdom, for the sanctuary, and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they slaughtered the bulls, and the priests received the blood and threw it against the altar. And they slaughtered the rams, and their blood was thrown against the altar. And they slaughtered the lambs, and their blood was thrown against the altar. 
Then the goats for the sin offering were brought to the king in the assembly, and they laid their hands on them. And the priests slaughtered them and made a sin offering with their blood on the altar, to make atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. And he stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres, according to the commandment of David and of Gad the king's seer, and of Nathan the prophet. For the commandment was from the Lord through his prophets. The Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah commanded that the burnt offering be offered on the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song to the Lord began also. And the trumpets, and accompanied by the instruments of David, king of Israel, the whole assembly worshipped, and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. When the offering was finished, the king and all who were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. And Hezekiah the king and the officials commanded the Levites to sing praises to the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. And they sang the praises with gladness. They bowed down and worshipped. Then Hezekiah said, You have now consecrated yourselves to the Lord. Come near. Bring sacrifices and thank offerings to the house of the Lord. And the assembly brought sacrifices and thank offerings. And all who were of the willing heart brought burnt offerings. The number of the burnt offerings that the assembly brought was 70 bulls, 100 rams, and 200 lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the consecrated offerings were 600 bulls and 3,000 sheep. But the priests were too few and could not flay all the burnt offerings. So until other priests consecrated them, their brothers, the Levites, helped them. Their brothers, the Levite helped them until the work was finished, for the Levites were more upright in heart than the priests in consecrating themselves. Because a great number of burnt offerings, and there was the fat of the peace offerings, and there were the drink offerings for the burnt offerings, thus the service of the house of the Lord was restored. And Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because God had provided for the people for the thing came about suddenly. Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. For the king and his princes and all the assembly in Jerusalem had taken counsel to keep the Passover in the second month, for they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not consecrated themselves in sufficient number, nor had the people assembled in Jerusalem. And the plan seemed right to the king and all the assembly. So they decreed to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that the people should come and keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel, at Jerusalem. For they had not kept it as often as prescribed. So car carriers went throughout all Israel and Judah with letters from the king and his princes as the king had commanded, saying, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, Is and Israel, that he may turn again to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. Do not be like your fathers and your brothers who were faithless to the Lord God of their fathers so that he made them a desolation, as you see. Do not now be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord and come to his sanctuary, for which he has consecrated forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. So the couriers went from city to city throughout the country of Ephraim and Manasseh 
and as far as Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. However, some men of Asher of Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord. And many people came together in Jerusalem to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great assembly. They set to work and removed the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for burning incense they took away and threw into the brook Kidron. And they slaughtered the Passover lamb on the fourteenth day of the second month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed, so that they consecrated themselves and brought burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. They took their accustomed post according to the law of Moses, the man of God. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> The priests threw the blood that they received from the hand of the Levites, for there were many in the assembly who had not consecrated themselves. Therefore the Levites had to slaughter the Passover lamb for everyone who was not clean, to consecrate it to the Lord. For a majority of the people, many of them from Ephraim, Manasseh, Ishakar, and Zebulon had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover otherwise than as prescribed. For Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord pardon everyone who sets his heart to seek God, the Lord, the God of his fathers, even though not according to the sanctuary's rules of cleanness. And the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. And the people of Israel who were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with all their might to the Lord. And Hezekiah spoke encouragingly to all the Levites who showed good skill in the service of the Lord. So they ate the food of the festival for seven days, sacrificing peace offerings and giving thanks to the Lord, the God of their fathers. Then the whole assembly agreed together to keep the feast for another seven days. So they kept it for another seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, gave the assembly 1,000 bulls and 7,000 sheep for offerings. And the princes gave the assembly 1,000 bulls and 10,000 sheep. And the priests consecrated themselves in great numbers. The whole assembly of Judah, the priests and the Levites, the whole assembly that came out of Israel, and the sojourners who came out of the land of Israel, and the sojourners who lived in Judah, rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the priests and the Levites arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came to his holy habitation in heaven. Now when all this was finished, all Israel were present, went out to the cities of Judah, and broke in pieces the pillars, and cut down the Asherim, and broke down the high places and the altars throughout all Judah and Benjamin, and in Ephraim and Manasseh, until they destroyed them all. Then all the people of Israel returned to their cities, every man to his possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and of the Levites division by division, each according to his service, the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings and peace offerings to minister in the gates of the camp of the Lord and to give thanks and praise. The contribution of the king from his own position, possessions was for the burnt offerings, the burnt offerings of the morning and evening, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbath, the new moons and the appointed feast, as it is written in the law of the Lord. And he commanded the people who lived in Jerusalem to give the portion due to the priest and the Levites, that they might give themselves to the law of the Lord. And as soon as the command was spread abroad, the people of Israel gave in abundance the first fruits of grain, wine, 
oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the people of Israel and Judah who lived in the cities of Judah also brought in the tithe of cattle and sheep and the tithe of the dedicated things that had been dedicated to the Lord their God and laid them in heaps. In the third month they began to pile up the heaps and finished them in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. And Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites about the he heaps. Azariah, the chief priest, who was of the house of Zadok, answered him, Since they began to bring the contributions into the house of the Lord, we have eaten and have enough and have plenty left, for the Lord has blessed his people, so that we have this large amount left. Then Hezekiah commanded them to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. And they faithfully brought in the contributions, the tithes and the dedicated things. The chief officer in charge of them was Kananiah the Levite, with Shammai his brother a second, while Jael, Azaziah, Nahath, Ashahel, Jeremoth, Josabad, Alil, Imachiah, and Mahath, and Benaiah were overseers assisting Kanahatniah and Ishimai, his brother, by the appointment of Hezekiah the king, and Azariah the chief officer of the house of God. And Kor, the son of Ibna, the Levite, keeper of the east gate, was over the freewill offerings to God, to a, a portion the contribution reserved for the Lord in the most holy offerings, Eden, Miniamen, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Zechaniah were faithfully assisting him in the cities of the priests to distribute the portions to their brothers, old and young alike, by divisions, except those enrolled by genealogy males from three years old and upward. All who entered the house of the Lord as the duty of each day required, for their service according to their offices by their divisions. The enrollment of the priests was according to their fathers' houses. That of the Levites from twenty years old and upward was according to their offices by their divisions. They were enrolled with all their little children, their wives, their sons, their daughters, the whole assembly, for they were faithful in keeping themselves holy. And for the sons of Aaron the priest who were in the fields of common land, belonging to their cities, there were men in the several cities who were designated by name to distribute portions to every male among priests and to every one among the Levites who was enrolled. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah. He did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. And every work that he undertook in the service of the house of God and in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. Psalm 48, Zion, the city of our God, a song, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. For behold, the kings assembled, they came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic, they took to flight. Trembling took hold of them there, anguish as a woman in labor. By the east wind you shattered the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen, in the city of the floor of host, in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. We have thought on your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. 
Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around her, number her towers. Consider well her ramparts. Go through her citadels. that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide us forever. And that is today's Bible reading. As always, be kind to one another, love one another. Get out there and see this big, beautiful world. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.